Okay, so here is Blackboard. Once you get into our course, this is what your Blackboard will look like. It'll look exactly like this. The only major feature that you won't see is this orange bar that's up on the top of the screen. I get to see, obviously, the professor's point of view, but I want to also see what it looks like uh, if I add things in or subtract things in a Blackboard. I want to see what the students actually see. So I'm in what we refer to as the student preview mode, uh, and that's what is over here. Okay, so you just won't have this area here. So let me explain to you what's, what's going to be um, going on with here, because this is where you're going to be spending most of your time, okay, with an online course. First off, I call this the dashboard. This is basically, uh, you'll be clicking on certain things over here um, and you'll be able to, well, I'll talk about these, okay? Um, the welcome start here screen is this part here. Uh, it's just an introduction, what you're gonna find on here and so forth. There's some focus things on here. Don't worry about this uh, lab, lecture and lab readiness thing. You don't have to do that. Um, I made a different thing. You'll just have to do the, uh, the syllabus quiz, okay? Um, everything I'm gonna explain is also written over here. So you can take a look at this. Okay, everything in yellow here is that that's what I talked to you about. Make sure you email me through the Blackboard mail. Um, again, Blackboard mail, the inbox, Blackboard mail, Blackboard mail. It's all, I can't overemphasize it enough. Okay, this is where you're going to email. I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so that's what this is over here is the welcome screen start here. The contact information, um, Basically, a little bit about myself, but I'm emphasizing I had to put some sort of email address here as a default. Otherwise, it kept on saying I have to put something there. So I put this email address. Do not. And that's what I'm em emphasizing here. Do not email me through here. I want you to email me at the inbox Blackboard mail. OK, as I explained to you, I will check it two to three times a day, every day. OK, so if you don't get a reply from me in 24 hours, and usually it's much, much sooner than that, um, then I just didn't get it for some reason. OK, I do check this often and I want you to check it as, not as often as me, but at least twice a day, maybe 10 o'clock in the morning and six o'clock at night every day, because there are days I'm going to be sending two or three emails in the same day. Um, so, yes, you need to be checking this. If this is our only form of communication, this is going to be the place that you got to be checking. OK, so, again, welcome. We did that already. The contact information. I also put other things here in the contact information. You can take a look at this on your own, too. But it's all there. Uh, other facilities that the uh, the college offers you. But this is what I've been emphasizing to everyone. Make sure you check this often, okay? The inbox Blackboard mail, okay? This is where you could create a message, all right? Uh, you could also create a folder. You want to put stuff in there that is just dealing with, you know, my emails that I send about lab versus lecture. You could create your own folders as much as you want. You will see the usual numbers over here change. Obviously, most likely to be something from me okay, that you need to open and take a look at. Um, but you have also, I don't know if I could do it here. Yeah, you have access to all your other classmates here. This is a wonderful tool. Let's say you wanna have a meeting and say, hey, look, uh, we're all gonna be meeting at the library at 12 o'clock on this Wednesday. Everybody is more than welcome to join us. You could actually make everyone Come if you want, you know, just highlight the area, just, you know, just change it so that the recipients are over here, send it to them all, and you could do it this way. So um, you know that all your classmates are going to check this area for me to send an email. So this is also the best place for you to send them an email. And they know it's from your class, not from college or a different class like the CCM email it would be. So I want everyone to get um, conditioned to use this often, okay? Course notifications, um, you know, they could be announcements. Yeah, I guess, yeah, the announcements would be there. Uh, I don't do much of this except maybe about tutoring. Um, I'll probably give you something 
once a week or so uh, about tutoring, but don't count on the certain semesters, like the summer semesters. Uh, we just don't do that. Okay. Um, I wouldn't even use the ask your instructor, just email me and just ask me. Okay. You could also go to frequently asked questions um, there before you email me about the course. How much should you study in a week? How's the, um, well, here, I'll just show you. Okay. How long is the course? And you could see all that. Um, is this course graded? Um, when does it begin? When does it end? You could do all that. Um, where do I submit the lab assignments? Where do I submit quizzes? Just basically down to earth, straightforward information. Okay. Um, so that's what you're going to over there. Now let's talk about this because you're going to be spending a lot of time on this because this is where your course material will be found. Okay. So the syllabus and other documents. So this is where if you need to download this, the course syllabus because you lost yours or you left it at home and now you're at the school for whatever reason. So you could re-download it. You could take a look at it yourself. Also the course calendar that I showed you with the checklist, you could reprint it out here also. Okay. Also, if I have to do any kind of revision, I don't know, uh, the generator at the college went down and we couldn't get it, whatever. There's certain things that can happen remotely. Uh, a hurricane can happen and the whole town could be out of power for one whole week. Um, and I've been here with, uh, if you remember Hurricane Sandy, that's when that did happen. So, um, so I might have to revise certain things if I need to. Usually don't, but those uh, rare occasions, yeah. So I'll put that over here. The syllabus quiz will be found over here. Um, it's just 10 multiple choice questions. You could print this out and you could put all the uh, your answers on here on a written part, like taking notes. But then when you open it, I gave you directions on how to go about doing this. I'll show you, you gotta use the smart proctoring. Um, area, which I'll show you in assessments uh, and create an account if you haven't already, and you take it out over there. Remember, you got to have a strong internet co connectivity, at least 15 megabytes per second, uh, 20 would be even better, okay? Um, and just read this, it's pretty straightforward. Try and do this on day one, if not day two of this semester, just get it out of the way, okay? Um, so let me, oh, I can't make it small. Okay. The entering survey questionnaire, that's what this is over here. All you have to do is download it um, and then don't even print it out. There is no reason to print out. I made it so that you could actually type all your answers over here or put a checkbox or whatever you want to do and just write your answers, type them in. Um, that's my suggestion how to do this um, and then save it. If you don't save it as a different name, I would say use your, your own first and last name, and then you're going to email it to me uh, as an attachment through the um, Blackboard email, okay? Um, so that's what that is. Uh, here, if you need to see the lecture objectives are over here, the lab objectives are over here too. I'll talk about the discussion boards. I made a copy of the rubric of how I grade the uh, discussion boards. You can look at it over here. Um, whenever you need to do a proctored exam, the instructions on how to go about doing that is over here. If you need to order a lab kit that you haven't done already, the information is over here. This is how you're going to uh, register for mastering AMP, which is gonna be the lab component of your course. Okay, um, and I'll show you how to go about doing that. Okay, um, and this is just an FYI if you were curious how um, uh, we put together the anatomy, physiology, or biology courses. We try to do it by the guidelines. Okay, so that's what's going to be found in the syllabus and other documents. If you have questions about the CCM policies, they're all, uh, this is a link to actually CCM's uh, website uh, with its policies. Then you're gonna see the lecture learning modules and the lab learning modules. The lecture learning modules is where you're gonna get all your information. Now, the first block over here is going to be just an introduction, but then we go into the chapters, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, and so forth. And they follow them a read book. So <clears throat> let me show you over here. If we're gonna do, um, 
Yeah, I, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's um, yeah, let's just start with the first one. Okay, so when you click on this, all right, there's a lot here to read. Okay, this is kind of giving an overview of uh, what this uh, unit or chapter is going to be on, the objectives that you should be able to do by the end of the chapter reading. Um, make sure you do these uh, these tasks over here to help reinforce the the information. These do not get handed in. It's just for you to solidify the material. Um, here's some other things that you can do to even um, uh, solidify the material for you further. And the only thing you do have to do here is the lecture quiz on this chapter. And I'll show you where that is, okay? Um, now, this is what's, this is where you're gonna get all the information is this area here, the contents. Now to enlarge this a little bit, because you can see it's all cut off here. If you click on, I believe it's this, yeah, okay. Um, so what you're looking at is the overview. Here's the little introduction about the chapter. Okay, you can read that on your own. Um, this is where you're going to find the reading uh, assignment and the PowerPoint presentation. So it's telling you chapter one, the reading assignment is this over here using the Marie book. Um, but you also could download the PowerPoint over here, right? PPT is going to be PowerPoint. That's what this is here. The narrated lecture PowerPoint is my video lecture of that PowerPoint. And it goes hand in hand with that PowerPoint. Now, I want to show you this for a moment. Okay. It's time to improve your Worst writing game with Grammarly Go. Problems. Grammarly Go is an AI we'll service that here. offers prompts to help. All right. All right, here we go. Intro so AMP. right now, um, so I'm going over the, the, the chapter. Now, let me see if you can actually hear this. Basics. What is anatomy? What is physiology? Okay. Anatomy is the study of the body. Um, the integratory system is going to be... Small, yeah, even small intestines, isn't that digestive? It is. And you'll see words like stomach and kidneys and heart. You see these... Okay, so I just want to pause here for a moment. Um, I don't know if you could hear me well or not, but I could tell you this. I've, I've actually recorded these. I was actually ahead of my times. I recorded these um, about three years, nah, probably about five years before the pandemic hit. Uh, luckily, anatomy and physiology hasn't changed uh, for 100 years, so it doesn't matter. Um, but the thing is, I recorded these then. And at that point, I wasn't using my cell phone to record. I had this little camera that was uh, uh, not the best, but I wanted the idea that I could actually uh, span this so that I could get it from skeleton to skeleton. Okay, this is actually in our lab room of uh, AMP. This is when I was teaching um, at uh, County College of Morris um, over there. I look so skinny there. Anyway, um, so you might not hear me so well here, but students, what they said is that if you get um, earbuds, um, the the nasalness of the, not my voice, but the way it comes out of the, the computer speakers is very tinty. But if you put ear pods in your ears, um, they say it is almost crystal clear. So that's my uh, suggestion is get some kind of ear pods or, or headphones as you listen to this. And you should be able to uh, be able to see this. Um, more okay. Better, okay. Now, the other thing I want you to see why I created it this way. Um, first off, there is the video, the PowerPoint itself over here. I do some art therapy that is over here. Let me see if I can do some more. Uh, I think I do. Yeah, see me drawing over here. So I, I want it. I do a lot of. I call this art therapy. So I do a lot of art therapy up here. So I wanted students to, when they watch the video, to make sure they get this also in addition to this. And I also, because not the, because I'm Italian, but I use my hands quite often um, to show things, whether I'm going to show a certain action of my arm, that this is flexion and this is extension. So I did want you to feel as though uh, that you're getting this, what I call trifecta. You're getting the PowerPoint, 
you're getting my art therapy up here, and you're getting me as though you're in the classroom. And that's what the students say they feel like, they're in the classroom with me. I'm actually recording this in front of a live audience uh, or a live classroom. So what's nice about this also is that when a student is asking questions, sometimes I repeat the question, but you, the questions that they ask are very good. They're probably the same questions that you have yourself. So I answer those. Um, so it feels as though you're in the classroom. I was thinking about making this PowerPoint a little bit clearer by doing the, um, if you're familiar with Khan Academy, um, where you don't get really much drawings, um, except you could do, I guess you could do some drawings on the PowerPoint itself, but you don't get the, uh, Dr. Khan or whatever. Um, but I like the idea that you. this is kind of, I don't want to say age, but it's kind of, you feel as though you're in the classroom. And I wanted that feeling. Um, so that's why I created it this way. Okay. So that is a little bit of what you're going to see on here. Now, the other thing that a lot of students uh, have told me is the video works out very well, but sometimes you can't, like what I'm pointing out over here, you might not be able to see this picture very well. So they told me that if they have a second digital device with the PowerPoint actually downloaded on there, like a tablet or something, and have your laptop showing this video, and then you have your notebook, so you are actually, and you could you could pause this and see what I'm actually pointing to because you're looking at the tablet with the picture on it, uh, crystal clear. They find that that's very, very helpful. Um, now, if you don't have a second digital device, that's fine. You could split the screen, right? Have one side be the video and the other side could be your uh, PowerPoint. But it seems that uh, students uh, use that quite often. Okay, so that's a little bit about the videos here. Keep in mind that um, I kind of broke them up. Here's the intro to AMP. There's actually four parts here. So do not just watch the first one and that's it because you're going to see that it only goes through one part of the PowerPoint. Well, where's the rest of it? Well, you got to watch all of these. And I kind of broke them up usually at good stopping points. Okay, but this one lecture is not going to be 36 minutes. It's going to be 36 plus 16 plus 36 plus 13. So we're looking at maybe an hour and a half or so, if I did the math right. Um, maybe an hour or so. Um, so yeah, you got to watch all of those. Now, I also did this. For instance, when you look at this first video, I also put down in the description what's being covered in that first video. OK, so it does everything up until homeostasis part one of part two. But then if you go to the second one over here. Then and I hit more. Now, here's the homeostasis part two of two and so forth. Other things on here. So you have an idea of where you're going to go. OK, um, I know that the, YouTube has just recently uh, done this. Um, let me just uh, show you what I mean. Uh, advertise advertisement. Okay, let's get this out. Something they did. Now, I didn't put these little, you see these little um, stopping points. There's one here. There's one here. There's one here. I didn't put them there. This is what YouTube thinks is a good stopping point where you could actually go to that part. Uh, like they're calling this anatomy. They're calling this, you can see it over here, just underneath the little video here, structure. This is called skeletal system. This is called nervous system. I wouldn't go with those. That's something that the YouTube has recently done. I don't know if you noticed on any, if you posted any YouTube uh, videos yourself, uh, but it's been doing that. It's a good idea, but it's not logically correct is what I'm saying, okay? Um, but it is being, all these are being covered. And I usually label these as like, uh, let's say, in AO1, AO2. Sometimes there's BO1 or CO1, CO2, CO3. Um, so that's how I've labeled them all. So that's basically what um, you're seeing with the videos and my tips about that. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the content. All right. So there's the video. So that's under narrate lecture and PowerPoints. Now let's talk about the review questions. 
All right, so this is the review question set for A and P. Now, let me just uh, zoom in on this or uh, open this up. These are probably the most important questions for you to do. Okay. Now, there's no answers here. I'll explain that in a reason. Why, I'll explain that uh, why in a in a moment or two. But let's say this after you watch the video, after you take all your notes, after you um, go through the PowerPoint. When you feel as though, hey, I know this material. Now you can close the book, close your notebook, and take this little quiz if you want to call that okay i'm not going to grade them for instance if this one here has 18 questions which it does maybe give yourself 20 minutes to answer these questions okay now if you get to a question and you have no idea about it uh maybe you didn't think it was significant enough to know and put into your notes See, this, these review question sheets are really going to help create better study habits. Or if you do have good study habits, they're going to amplify them. For instance, if we go to this question, um, this question, uh, let's say here, we'll say number seven, right? Now, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to tell you what the answer is for this, but I just want you to see what you, when you go through it. When you read this question, you might say, you know what, I think the answer is integral control. Well, if you think that's the answer, you better know why it's not dynamic equilibrium. You better know why it's not positive feedback. You better know why it's not negative feedback. And you better know why it's not set point adjustment. Just going to the right answer is not good. You need to be able to define each one of these because I might have a question on a test that is going to define what dynamic equilibrium is or what negative feedback is. So it's important for you just not to know what the correct answer is, but you need to know why all the other answers are incorrect. Okay, that does take some time to do. But of course, as you go through each chapter and do more and more of these questions, it takes me longer to explain it to you than for the neurons in your brain to fire from one neuron or nerve cell to another nerve cell. Right. Uh, it, it, you could think about it much faster than for me to explain things. So you need to be able to do that. Now, after you do all these questions to check them, you could go back to your notebook. If your notebook, for instance, this one here, if your note, oh, I'll do the same one. If your notebook does not have the word set point adjustment in there, then you probably felt it was not significant enough to know what a set point adjustment is. It, if you don't have anything about negative feedback, maybe you thought it was not important to put that in. I created these review question sets because I want you to understand what is important and what is not. So my suggestion is to put those words into your notebook and define what those words are so that you can study for the exam, okay? Because these are the kinds of questions you're going to see on the exam, all right? So that's why these are important, okay? Um, now, my suggestion is to meet up with one or two other students who have done these. Don't do them together. Please don't do them together. I don't like discussion groups like that. I never did if I was in a discussion group. We'll be wasting valuable time, okay? Because one person could take two hours to go through all this. Another person could take six hours. Another person could take 10 hours. You don't want a two-hour person to be teamed up with a 10-hour person, right? Well, how do you know that? Well, you don't know that. But what you do know is that they all answered them however long it took them. So now you meet everyone together and you're just going to go over the answers. That should only take maybe five minutes for each one. That's it. Maybe even less than that. Because you could say, okay, wh why did you pick A? I picked B and so did Sue over here pick B. Maybe you're correct. What made you say A as opposed to B? 
And then that's where you start talking. That's where you start building bonds and, and you start learning how each other learns, you know, oh, but I found this video over here or look, there's a great mnemonic about this or look at this chart over here or remember when Dr. Gamaro said this over here. That's where you're going to be learning from each other. OK, now um, I don't give the answers out. However, if you go through all these questions and there's maybe one or two that you're still stumped on. If you email me and you email me show proven to me that you have gone through all this, that you have you said, you know what, Dr. Gamara, I did number seven and I'm still stumped on it. I know it's not negative feedback or positive feedback because that deals with this on page whatever the book or this uh, PowerPoint slide. And I know it's not set point adjustment because that's dealing with the same thing. I'm just confused on what you're saying is the dynamic equilibrium and inter integration inter, uh, integration control. Um, because your slide number 21 says this, but then slide number 19 says this, or your video says this, uh, it's confusing. I'm still not gonna give you the answer, but I will surely guide you. I might say, you know, but look at what, uh, what PowerPoint 22 says in reference to uh, the difference with static uh, equilibrium. And then I usually get an email. If, if I do get an email, usually it will say, thanks, you just helped me a lot. Thank you so much. So I won't give you the answer, but I will guide you, okay? The other reason why I don't give the answers uh, well, that, that, the reason why I don't get the answer for that, because I want, I'm not always going to be there. You need to know how to do this by yourself. So that's why I'm trying to guide you where you would find the answers, that kind of thing. The other thing is 20 to 25% of my exams and quizzes will have these questions on them verbatim. So if, so I basically award the students who do these, who do them properly because they will appear on the quizzes and exams. So that's another reason why I don't give the answers. Otherwise, students will just memorize the answers. And that's not why I created this, okay? So that's a little bit about the uh, review question sets. I highly recommend that you do these, okay? All right, there's a few other strongly suggested activities. You could take a look at that. Um, a couple of videos that might be over here that could help um, solidify the material for you. All right. Um, and then there's this discussion board, which students don't usually use. So I'm not going, these are not the ones that I said that would be graded. This is where some students will just ask a question. If another student has an answer, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, a discussion board, like a blog going back and forth, back and forth with students. But a lot of students don't tend to use them. But I put that there just to have, maybe there might be a couple of students that want to do it that way. So I put that in for every chapter just so you could do that. Okay. So that's where you, that's what you're going to find on lecture learning modules. Okay. Um, so let me go back to that. And basically, every chapter, every module is going to be set up the same way as I just showed you, all right? Whether the one I just showed you, whoop, the one I just showed you here, or chemistry and so forth, okay? All right, so let me uh, now take you to lab learning modules. It's kind of set up the same way, but different material. First off, this is, okay, I just clicked on lab learning modules. There's a little bit of description about lab itself right up here, but this is where you're going to find the lab guide manual, okay? This is where you're going to, this is like the 100 page thing or so. You need to download this and you'll be reading about it. The first few pages is also going to give you some tips about studying um, this material. Not just lab, but just A and P in general. I highly recommend that you read that material, the first few pages, okay? If, again, I put, the, uh, this is what, no, this is different. This is the lab safety contract. When you download this over here, you need to sign it and then save it and submit it to me. You cannot, as in the yellow over here, you cannot, um, do a lab without this being sent to me, okay? You had to read the uh, 
the safety uh, rules and stuff. So if you cut yourself or something like that, um, so that you are uh, aware of what to do. OK, so this I want. Make sure you do this on day one or day two. This is another easy one to do, like the entering survey. OK, and then we go into the different modules like we saw with um, um, with, with the learning over the lecture learning mo modules. So let me just show you what's what's going on over here. OK, I'll show you a different one. So it's going to be the same setup over here. OK, um, we have the overview, the introduction. Now, you're going to have here a lab report that you're going to need to download. There's the lab report that you need to download. OK, it gives you instructions on what to do and when's each do. OK, there's also going to be sometimes a laundry list that you need to download. Basically, it's the list of things that you need to know for this lab. OK, you also have a certain reading from the lab manual, but you're also going to get the um, uh, the PowerPoint that goes with this. And the next thing over here is going to my video lecture on those uh, on that section. There may be something else like a virtual microscope um, material that you're going to have to do. Here's some la laboratory exercises to help solidify the material, okay? Some suggested activities for you to do. Um, and, oh, there's another discussion board if you wanna do that, okay? So the only thing that you're gonna have, let me go back to this overview. The only thing that you're gonna have to submit here is gonna be the lab assignment or the lab report, okay? Which is over here. All right, that's the only thing you got to do, okay, for each one of these. And like I said, you'll be getting emails to explain about each one, all right? All right, so going back to the dashboard over here, the next thing is going to be the mastering A and P. Now, when you need to register for the mastering A and P, you're going to click on that first, mastering A and P, and you're going to probably spend most of the time in study area. Now, I can't show you with the student preview what this is, but as soon as you click on study area, you probably are not going to get this because I don't even know what's going to show up. See, I go right to it. You're going to get a different um, uh, screen saying that you have to plug in the access code and purchase either the 18 week or the 18 month, whether you want to have the e-text with it or not. So that's where you're going to have to do that. Once you do that, then whenever you click on mastering a and P, you will go to this website, you go to this area first and there's the, the e-text, but you'll be spending a lot of time on study area. Okay, and then study area over here, you're going to do some of these things on here, all right, whether it's study by chapter, practice tests, animation videos, this inter interactive physiology, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing, okay, um, I highly recommend you look into this. Um, there's also this practice uh, you're going to spend time on here when you deal with um, labs um, to look at different models and different bones and histology slides. You're going to take a look at this over here. OK, um, if uh, you have to do any kind of physiology uh, exercises, that'll be the physio X here. So that's basically what this is. Now I'm going to give you some direction with each one of the lab reports. So that's what that's all about. OK. Um, okay, so going on the same area here, syllabus, CCM policies, lecture and lab learning modules, mastering a &P. Now let's talk about assessments. This is where you're going to um, go and take well all your submissions, whether it's a quiz, um, an exam, a lab report to submit, a discussion board to do, and so forth, okay, an exam. So first off, um, there's items here that are not going to be proctored. Your lecture quizzes, the lecture discussion boards, and the lab report submissions. These don't get proctored. So you could just enter here, and when one quiz is open, you will see it over here, okay? Um, when you're ready to submit a 
lab report, it'll be there. When you need to do a discussion board, it'll be here. Now, the things that need to be proctored, okay, are going to be found here. Now, unfortunately, I can't go into here under the student preview mode. You just have to take my word for it that to do a, an exam, anything that's going to be proctored, you go to um, assessments first, and then you go up to this area here. This is what I'm going to refer to as the Smarter Proctoring Banner that's found on the top of the screen. And then you're going to click on here. Now, the first time you're going to use it, you're going to have to, as I mentioned before, you're going to have to um, build an account. You're going to have to go through a number of uh, processes to do that. All right. It should take you about... Uh, could take you about 20 minutes to do because it also has to install the um, the extensor that's going to be put onto your um, onto your uh, uh, your browser. OK, um, and you'll just, then you're going to find the syllabus quiz or the practice quiz or the lecture exam or whatever. You'll be able to find that if it is open to do. OK, down here, um, these are the exams that are linked to the Smarter Proctoring. I had to create a folder for that. So this is kind of like a dummy folder. Don't ever go in here. You're not gonna be able to look at it, okay? This is where all those things are on. But if you click on it, it's going to ask you for a password. There is no password. If you ask me for a password, I already know that you went into the wrong area. Don't go in here. Go over here or anything that's not proctored into here, okay? But I had to create this uh, because it had to be, those exams needed to be linked over here in another folder. So it's kind of like a technical folder, so to say. So you could just ignore this one, okay? Um, so on here, the supplemental resources, when I find a different picture, if I find another picture or a different thing to look at, then I'll add something there. But right now it's empty. Um, so there's nothing there. It's just if I find something, okay? Um, your grades will be in here. This is also linked to your CCM email, but do not, do not email me over here, all right? I don't care if you check over here for other people's emails, but where do we go? Up here to inbox Blackboard Mail. This is the only place that I will be emailing and us two will, well, you and, the, and I will communicate with. This is the only place over here. So make sure you check often there, okay? Then you got student services, tutoring, uh, and Blackboard help. You could also get that information over here. Um, I don't use really anything over here. So disregard that, okay? I'm gonna probably uh, make this blank after this video, okay? So you should just see uh, all this material up here, all right? So that is basically Blackboard. You will be spending all your time on here. Okay? All right.